Hello time travelers. Welcome to part two of fixing my IBM T61 laptop. I got my Wi-Fi card, hard drive cover, and CPU in the mail. That's where we're going to be working on. Starting with is this hard drive cover. Didn't have a screw. I thought I had a little bag of screws for IBM stuff. Already, I have to have a boop in the beginning of my story. Ran all the way upstairs, couldn't find it, looked all over. I already brought them down. A little bag of random screws for IBM laptops. This come in handy a few times. This goes in there. All these screws get dumped out. So I can find one that looks like it, it works for that. Maybe this one. Sweet, that's it. It's the right one. <laughs> Thank you, random IBM screws that I bought like five years ago. At least that long. Well, welcome. To the channel, new subscribers. I do random tech stuff all the time. I decided to start recording it, basically. And that's what my YouTube channel is. Also, sci-fi comedy. That happens sometimes. Like this ridiculous black hole thing. Which, it just looks like a normal crude room thing. But when I film, it's a black hole. Don't ask why, because I don't know how or why. It's hibernated. It needs to be off. Not hibernated. Off. But Rob, what's the difference? I rebooted it. It's important you know the difference. Laptops usually hibernate if you unplug their power cable and then shut the lid. You just have to wait for spinny roundy dots. Spinny roundy dots. Spinny roundy dots. What's Windows doing? I don't know. It's just spinning roundy dots. It's a cold day. I'll take a, a nap on this warm keyboard. My cats do. A nap while I wait for spinning roundy dots preparing Windows. Windows button X. U U. Turn it off. Now it's completely off because I chose the shutdown option. Take the battery out. Mm. Mm. Take the USB Wi-Fi out because it was faster than the built-in one. And I'm gonna upgrade. Actually, in the meantime, I'm gonna show you guys something. This is very, very cool. Middleton BIOS, which unlocks the ability to use other CPUs and Wi-Fi cards, including Wi-Fi AC. The Middleton BIOS comes with a program you can download and run, but it only runs in 32-bit windows. The CD is actually easier. If you don't know what program to use to burn ISO images, which the download from Middleton BIOS comes with an ISO file. If you don't know how to burn those, grab a, a copy of a program called CD Burner XP. It's super easy. So what I'm gonna do is hit restart right here. And on IBM, so you got the Think Vantage button. Look it, look it. It says Think Vantage. And you start pressing that on this screen right here. Sorry, I can't give you a focus because I'm pushing the button. Here, focus. Thomas! Then we want F12, temporary boot device. And you tell it the CD-ROM. Huh? Check failed. I think, well, never mind. I think I have to get a different version of Middleton for this computer. Toss! But trust me, it, it worked on the other T61 right here. And it ran and it went boop. And then it rebooted the computer and then it ran again. And then it went boop and rebooted the computer. So after a few times of that, I was like, why do you keep going boop and rebooting my computer? And then I realized the boot means it's done. So then I hit eject. And now we're gonna see if this thing likes Wi-Fi card. Wi-Fi AC, it's a dual band wireless Intel 7260. The Middleton BIOS also gives you the ability to put more memory in here, up to eight gigs. Then I looked and a kit of two four gig sticks was like 108 bucks and I was like, um, no thanks for right now, maybe laters. I have too many things on my table. Toss. Oh, it's a tiny screw. The one I needed for my thing, probably. Toss. Well, there it is. See, I did set it out to prep for this video. Now, this 
The Intel 7260 is what they call a half height PCI Express card. So it's got this metal thing. You gotta either buy with it or buy separately. Can't remember specifically what it's called. I'm sorry, I can't memorize everything in the universe. 900 years of time and space, you can't expect me to remember everything. Here's what it's called. That's what you wanna look for on eBay. Or you can find a 7260 with it already with it because because it goes in that slot right there and see that's a half height you don't need all three of these cables you need the the white one and the black one for sure i think we'll find out together this is a learning experience stay on her stay plugged in stupid half height wi-fi thingy what's it get plugged in there we go all i need is the keyboard now, the only way this Wi-Fi card will work is if the Middleton BIOS worked. Tower button. Come on, moment of truth. We've all been waiting for you. Boop. Well, it got this far. Normally it'd give me like an error with some crazy number saying, screw you guy. You can't have good things. And by good things, I mean that thing you tried to put in there. Now I'm going to bring up Device Manager with Windows button R and then devmgmt.msc. Shut up, Adobe Flash thing. You're not part of this scene. Network adapters. Intel Dual Band Wireless AC 7260. Detect, 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 mated, detected. It knows what it is. Wait. It sees both my 5G and my 2.4 networks. Now Windows button R, ncpa.cpl. Now that it's connected, double click on it. And it says the speed is 360 megabytes a second. Hmm, where's the USB one? That one is just N. Let's see how fast that one was. Plug it in that USB hole. It's identifying. 72 megabytes a second. This is my wireless N USB thing that I have in there. 72 megabytes a second. Okay, put that over here. Watch, right click, disable. Disable. Fine, unplugged. Oh, it's not possible to disable it because it's unplugged right now. Blah, 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 boo hoo. Should have done what I asked to. Maybe it didn't want to disable it because I left this box open that said 72. Now it's like impossible. 400, sweet. That's a bunch of percent increase. That's all the percents. Right, shut it down, shut it down. Shutting down. Now I have to remove more screws because this frame has to come off. Checking out some screws, putting them over there. Then I have to take the CPU out of my other T61 because I upgraded it a few years ago throw that in the T60 so I can use it for a security cam. What's it? Security cam, what's it? Our boss. <sighs> Death bag. Now this one has a speaker in the way. Come out, speaker. You're all up in my business. Go be in someone else's business for a while. And this is in the way. Lame. Why does this T61 got to be differenter than the other T61 I worked on? With more screws to remove. Looking around like I better know where my thermal paste is for the next step. Because it's a pain if I have to run upstairs, look all over the place just to come back downstairs and it's already here. Okay. There's another thing I got to take out. Germany Christmas! Different version of IBM T61. Oh, I forgot to bring rubbing alcohol. Yeah. All right, I got it. I got it. I got it. You might say, Rob, why are you cleaning off that other thing? The CPU is not even over there. You got to clean up both because you can't go back with old thermal paste because it won't have as good con contact as putting on new stuff. I need more rubbing alcohol. I'll find the two surfaces on the the giant heatseek wants it this is for the gpu 
And this is for the CPU. Clean them off. That was easy. Toss. Now this CPU retention mechanism is held in just with the screw. It's not an actual screw. You turn it. Half turn. Come out, you lame CPU. It is a T7500. Grab the other CPU clamshell. This is a T9500. Oop. Oop. Line up the arrow with the arrow. Let's give you a better look. It's so easy to change a CPU. You can literally do it with one hand. As long as a stupid piece of thermal tape doesn't get in the way. Let's see if you can see it. There's an arrow on that corner and it's too bright in here for you to see in the film. And this has the arrow. So the arrow is in the same spot. I said I could do this with one hand. Don't make me a liar. There, it went in. I'm gonna tighten this one half turn and it's in, that's it. And then take the 7500 lame sauce nugget CPU, stick it in the clamshell. It's probably worth $2. I'll get my thermal paste ready. I've had this same thermal paste since 2004. Ice Fusion. Fancy name for some gunk in a jar. See? Gunk. Jar. This one comes with a spatula, what's it? It's my preferred method for putting on thermal paste because you spread it and get covered everywhere. And this one actually doesn't have a, a lid. You just got the die or whatever it is sitting here. That's all you need to cover. Same for the GPU. And I'm a little bit messy, but that's fine. A little bit of thermal paste going over the edge never hurt anybody. It's not like there's any components over there. This is gonna give me some good performance. So you can see what it's supposed to look like. There, that's adequate. Adequate as in it was a little messy on the sides. If you're totally wanna be clean about it, you can use a toothpick and Q-tips. By the way, you don't put thermal paste on whatever this chip is here. It's probably the chipset. It has a thermal pad on here. That's the heat for the house kicking on. I don't feel like running upstairs to turn it off, so you're just gonna have to deal with the background noise. That's in there. I'm gonna put all these screws back in. Now I'm just gonna tighten it down until it's kinda tight, and I'm not gonna give it any tension yet until all four are just kinda tight. And you also see that I'm going in a crisscross motion. The reason for this is so that we get even pressure. No, that's too loud. I'm trying to film up YouTubes. Heat, I'm gonna turn the heat off. Let me film my YouTube so I don't have to yell over the blowy, big blowy Tron sound. Oh, we got a cricket. Shut up, cricket. Not part of the scene. There was a cricket in the episode with Emo Me called The Good, The Sad, and The Emo. <laughs> I just left it in. I made it part of the humor of the episode. Boop. I think it likes that CPU. Come here, system menu. I want to check a thing. Oh no. Still says T7500. I've had this happen before with when I first got the T60 and I installed Windows and then I installed the newer CPU later. I have to reinstall Windows. So weird. You see me continue to, to fiddle around and meddle with these old IBM laptops. You should get subscribed so you can see what happens. I won't film installing Windows, but you know, definitely have a follow-up video about the laptop. Let's get subscribed so you can see that. Thanks for watching. I've been Robert Jean. Check out some other videos that I'm sticking up here for you. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking that. Or you could talk to me on a social networking platform and one of my at handles over here. Bye.